Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday to you. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Stand-Up. Without further ado, let's get started. You know, in America, we're about to celebrate our Independence Day on July 4th, and while thinking about Agile and Independence and all the great things that come along with it and the freedom we have to do our work in a way that eliminates waste and increases value and, and makes things so positive, I came across a document. Now, this document is pretty old. It's from 2005, and uh, it was put together by, it appears to be, and I hope I have the original authors correct here, Robert Collum, Steve Bursick, and Brad Appleton. And uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a fun little document, and I, I wanted to read this to you. Uh, I know it sounds odd, but once I start reading, I think you'll enjoy this. Recent research has discovered a very interesting cache of papers about a little-known tribe called the Agile Developers. The first document is a draft dated July 4th, where the year is Ill illegible. The document begins. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for some, de for some developers to dissolve the bands which have connected them with others, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all agilists are created equal, that they're all endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are work, freedom from unnecessary bureaucracy, and the pursuit of happiness resulting from frequent delivery of working software to the business, that to secure these rights, methods are implemented by development teams deriving their just powers from the consent of the stakeholders, that whenever any form of process becomes destructive of these needs, it is the right of the developer to alter or to abolish it and to institute new processes laying their foundation on such principles and organizing their powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their job safety and happiness. When a long train of abuses and usurp usurpations pursuing invariably the same object in vices as designed to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such process and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these developers, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former processes. The history of the present formal high priesthood is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these projects. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. They have refused their assent to practices the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. They have forbidden project managers to allow practices of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till their assent should be obtained. And when so suspended, they have utterly neglected to attend to them. They have refused to okay other practices for the accommodation of groups of people unless those people would relinquish the right of representation in a legislature, a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. They have called together functional and physical configuration audits at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. They have dissolved stand-up planning meetings repeatedly for opposing with, many, with manly firmness their invasion on the rights of the developers. They have failed to provide their developers with private workspaces to code, integrate, and test in. They refused for a long time a centralized automated integration, integration building process that provides a definitive test of whether the code line is good. They have created a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. They have failed to provide tools to run the application as a whole. They have combined with others to subject to us to jurisdiction of foreign to our Constitution and unacknowledged by our laws given assent to their acts of legislation, removing the ability to commit changes to an appropriate code line at any time, removing freedom to resynchronize with the latest code line without fear of interrupting work because of things that are broken. 
for taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable processes, and altering fundamentally the practices of our projects. They are at the time transporting large armies of foreign outsourcers to complete the works of implementation, maintenance, and CMMI level 5 certification already begun with circumstances of cruelty and, and perfidy scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of civilized organization. They have ex excited domestic insurrections among us and have endeavored to bring on the inhabitation, uh, inhabitants of the frontiers the merciless process police whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all unit tests, information radiators, and pair programming workstations. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of free people. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our formal high priesthood brethren. We have warned them from time to time of our attempts by, legisl by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They, too, have been deaf to the voice of justice and of consanguinity. We must, therefore, acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them, as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies in war, in peace friends. We, therefore, the rep representatives of the Agile developers in Congress assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world, for the, re for the re rectitude of our intentions, do, in the name and by the authority of the good people in these projects, solemnly publish and declare that these agile practices are, and of right, ought to be free and independent methods, and that government of the developers by the developers and for the business shall not perish from the earth. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Wow. <laughs> I thought that was just absolutely cool. You know, while not making fun of any, you know, document that was written for our country, I thought that it was just very clever and ingenious that they came up with uh, with that that long-winded recitation of their thoughts and how they feel. And then in 2006, there was a follow-on that came along. Uh, I believe the follow-along was by David uh, Churchville, and uh, he added a pledge. And uh, he said, "If you're leaning towards a happy and supportive team, repeat the following: I pledge allegiance to the flag." of the Agile software movement and to the principles for which it stands, one team indivisible with simplicity and feedback for all. And he put a star by flag, and uh, he noted that the flag is probably just an index card. He says, hey, it's got stripes on it. You know, I think that while we, you know, make light of agility, and while we just kind of focus in on what makes us agile, and while we focus on what makes our country great this week, you know, those documents that I just read, while while humorous in nature and while you know serious in tone, I think that we need to take time to be grateful for those things that that make us independent and that give us the power to to freely build tools and uh, services and products that are going to help mankind and help society press forward. One day, someone may look back on you know, the things that we've built and uh, the way that we've contributed and, you know, be forever grateful that we took the time to do those things. And, you know, while, you know, these documents were done most particularly in jest, I think it's important for us to really understand, you know, what do we stand for? What, what makes us the people that we are who want to build these products and services? What what rights and what what creations do we have and and what are we doing to make a difference in the world today um you know are we embracing all those things necessary in order for us to continuously be successful and to help our organizations be successful 
Are we taking time out to measure what we're trying to do and to really dig in and help others be successful? Are we sharing our knowledge and are we, you know, are, are we creating an environment that's free from fear and paralyzing uncertainty and dysfunctional working conditions? Uh, are, are we are we really creating things that are helping our teams be successful in their endeavors and uh, really letting them enjoy the the most the most amazing parts of agile and that's the independence to do the things they need to do in order to be successful and know that they have a supporting cast that's going to help them all the way through. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that as you focus on independence this weekend and as you focus on all the many things that uh, that come from from being strong and being independent that you take a moment to you know thank those around you who help make this happen for you uh, look out for those people and make sure we express appreciation and when you go back to work or when you go back to your home office to work uh, try to find ways to express appreciation to those within your organization who are working hard to create the products and services and doing the things necessary in order to help us be successful as always, we encourage you to send ideas for your topics that you want to cover to learn more at AgileDad.com. And, of course, the Agile Dad website is filled with tons of information about this topic and many others. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, stay agile, my friends. Until next time, take care.